Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. All right, so let's talk about this. There's three types of friends in your life, period. Every single one of you have them. And um, as I bring these up, it doesn't make you wrong or right. It just makes it the reality. Number one, the first type of friend is there's friends in your life for a reason. And that basically means that there are people in your life that have a motive for wanting to be next to you. And um, when you have people in your life that have a motive, they basically want to get something from you. And there's nothing wrong with that. But, but the problem is this, is that if, if you don't understand the motive behind why people are coming into your life, if you don't really begin to pay attention to the little signs that they may show or display that can later harm you, this can become a major, major issue. But there's also people that you need for a reason. For example, you know what? When you buy a house, you obviously need a real estate agent, right? So you find the right real estate agent that you feel comfortable with. They come into your life. You kind of become friends. Like I've become friends with my real estate agent now for years. And, uh, and it's awesome. There was a reason. But there was a motive behind that, that friendship, that relationship. The motive was I need a house. He sells houses. Let's do this together. So there's a reason for this, right? So he wants something from me. But then the second type of friend that you have in your life is that you have people that are friends for a season. And so nothing wrong with seasons either, but this isn't just about what kind of friends you want to have in your life. This is also about what kind of friend you're going to be to someone else's life. And so friends for a season is this. They are with you until you do something they don't like. For example, let's just use the church since we're in church today. We do what's called every year, um, uh, you, like we're, we're doing the, the Family Thrill Night, which is an event that we do on Halloween. And for the last few years, we've been doing something every single Halloween in order to do an outreach to our community. Now, if you know Elevate Church, anything we do here is intentional. We don't just do things and see, be like, okay, let's, let's shoot some dice and see if we get sevens. No, our intention, our focus is to reach our community. Our intention is to be an outreach to a city that God has placed us in. And like clockwork, every year, right around this time, you always have people that have liked that have liked what Elevate Church does. They like that we have a school in Oaxaca. They like that we are helping children around the world. They like that we have some really good messages. They like that we have a great children's program, a great youth program. But the moment they see something they don't like, they leave. And every single Halloween, when we have this big event, there's always a person or a family that leaves the church. Why? Because they don't agree with Halloween. And so there are people that are here for a season right now. Good or bad? It goes both ways. Okay, because I get it. I totally understand that there are seasons in our life where we are going through life and there's a season where we're with a, 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 a specific group of people, family, friends, but we're, we're going a little bit more deeper than that. We're talking about what kind of friend do I want to be, not what kind of friends I want to get. Because until you know how to be a friend, man, you're never going to draw the kind of friend that you desire. And so the third type of friend is this one here. It's the friends for a lifetime. And the friends for a lifetime are the people that will value and love you in your lows, in your highs, in your worst, in your best, and when you're really ugly and when you mess up. Those are the people that will, man, they will, yeah, they'll, they'll correct you, they'll instruct you, but they'll value you, they'll love you, not for what you do for them, but for who you who they are to you. And when you find people that are a lifetime, when you find people that actually value you for, for who you are and not what they can do for you, let me tell you something, keep those people. Yeah. Even Jesus had lifetime. He only had, out of 12 disciples, he had three lifetime friends, Peter, James, and John. That was his inner circle of 
influence. And man, I'll tell you, he gave them some intimate information about, he allowed himself to just let his hair down literally and just be real and raw. I mean, they saw him at the, at the Garden of Gethsemane just losing it. They saw this. He wasn't afraid to be vulnerable in front of them. You need people that you can be vulnerable with, be honest with. And when you have people like that, let me tell you something, there's something special about that. But, but not everybody qualifies to be in the inner circle. Not everybody qualifies. You, you have to have wisdom from God in order to really understand what kind of friends you want to bring in. But let me ask you this question, but which friend are you? Because right now, either you're a friend that's, that's, that's a friend for a reason, or you're maybe a friend that's just for a season, or maybe you're a kind of friend that God wants you to be, a friend that's for a lifetime. It's awesome when you can say, I have friends today from 20 plus years, and we're still friends. And, and though there have been some rocky moments, I didn't let those rocky moments determine the type of friendship I was going to have with those people. But that takes Jesus, man. You can't do that alone. There's no way, not in this flesh. And, and I'm going to tell myself today. Uh, so just hold on to your, uh, your hats, and uh, I'm going to share a little bit of something with you. But listen, let's talk about what, what, what a life long friend looks like. Timothy had the perfect definition. Look at this. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. It says this. So Timothy goes, and I've known Kurt now for 15 years. 15 years. We've been good friends. I've been with him. In a, as a matter of fact, we had a disagreement. Remember that? Oh, yeah. oh it got ugly. But you know what? I, one, thing, one thing I have learned to develop, and I'm not perfect at it because I'm going to tell myself today, but I have learned to develop uh, a spirit of release. In other words, you know what? Uh, quick to forgive, quickly. So he and I had, he and I had a disagreement. And how awesome is that? You know, here he is, him and his wife, they lead our marriage ministry. It's pretty amazing. But we had a disagreement, and, and, uh, and then when he came back and, 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 and we got together, and I just said, hey, you know what? How about let's just forget about all this stuff, and let's just go win souls, man. Right. Isn't that what I said? Let's, let's, just go, let's just go change lives, man. Let's not get caught up on this dumb, dumb stuff. Man, you know what? The enemy can try to come in and do some stuff, play a number on us, but let's go just change lives, and we'll be good, right? And here we are years later. He's a part of our leadership, our team, and, man, 15 years, I can say I have a strong relationship with him, a lifelong friend. When it, got, when it was awesome, when it was ugly, and when it was awesome again. And let me tell you something, that is beautiful. So Timothy says, so this is what it looks like. So Timothy's like, you know, inviting people into this friendship. And he says this, join with me in this suffering. I mean, I don't think you're going to have many friends if you're inviting them to suffer with you. Right? I mean, I don't think you're going to be a popular person. But the reality is that you need to find people that are willing and ready to suffer with you, Amen. that are willing to be with you at your worst, at your best, in any scenario of your life. I need people that are willing to suffer with me. If we're talking about what does a God friendship look like, looks like, it's a person who is willing to suffer. I mean, doesn't the Bible say that love suffers long? Yeah, yeah it suffers long. That means that I got to put up with you for a minute. Amen? We all have to put up with each other for a minute, but it suffers long. That's true friendship. And he says, but don't, don't just be any friend that suffers with me. I want you to be like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. Man, because if you're not a good soldier like Christ Jesus, man, you're going to flop. You're not going to make it. Because we draw our strength in this. Jesus is the center of this relationship. And when he's the center, it doesn't matter what comes at us. It doesn't matter what people say about us. Because he's the center, man, we know how to stay firm. We don't run when, when it gets very difficult and when trouble hits. Man, we stay the course no matter what. So look at your neighbor and say, will you suffer with me? <laughs> Your spouse is like, I already do. <laughs> no, listen. Listen, why is it important to talk about this subject? It's important because people will take you places on this journey. And sometimes they'll take you to places that you don't belong, but if you have the right people in your life, most often they'll take you to the place. God has even set up an assignment and divine relationships in your life that will get you to your final destination. 
Nobody gets to God's vision or, or, or purpose in life without people. There's no possible way. God created earth. He created people in this earth for the purpose of relationship. So it matters to God, and it should matter to you as well, that when God puts divine people in your life, man, you got to develop that, that character of love suffers long you got to develop that character inside of you. Because, yeah, you can be a friend for a reason. Yeah, you can be a friend for a season, or you can be a friend for a lifetime. And you know what? Yes, will people burn bridges? Yeah, people may burn bridges with you, but you'll never be the, burn, the, the bridge burner for anyone. You always have to keep. If I was a, bur- if I was a bridge burner, I would have been like, man, forget you, Kurt. Man, see you. But I always kept my bridge open so that at any moment that Kurt came back, he can walk right over. And we got to have that spirit. we got to have that attitude, okay? So check this out. So people in your life will do three things. They're either leading you nowhere. Everybody say nowhere. nowhere. So let's talk about that. So there are people right now in your life that you have been in fellowship with, in friendship with. And you know, and even I know with my friendships, some of them, that this friendship is going nowhere. It's always the same story. It's always the same drama. It's always the same everything. Neither of us are progressing in this relationship. We're still in the same place. Man, we are stuck in 1999. We're still talking about what happened 15 years ago. We're still reminiscing about, man, do you remember when we were in high school? Dude, you're like 50 years old. Get over it. (laughs) My God, you're going nowhere in this relationship. We just keep we just keep revisiting, man, the, the, the memory lane, the memory book, the, the, the picture book, and we're just going back. Do you remember? Do you remember? But we're not creating anything new. Listen, God wants you to progress in your going. God wants you growing as well. So maybe right now the reason you're going nowhere is because you keep hanging with people that are going nowhere. Huh? Number two, then you got people that will take you everywhere. You know those relationships. Man, it's like an emotional roller coaster. One moment they're for you, the next moment they're against you. The one, next moment they're praying for you, the next moment they're cursing you. You know, the next moment I'm with you, I'll help you. The next moment, where are you? And there's like this emotional roller coaster of relationships. I know that you guys are used to knowing this phrase. They call it, it's like walking on eggshells with certain people. That's people that take you everywhere because you don't know what's going to happen. So you got people in your life right now that are taking you nowhere? Or you have people in your life right now that are taking you everywhere? Or you can have people that are taking you somewhere. And people that are taking you somewhere are the people that God wants to bring into your divine destiny. That, listen, before the foundations of this world, God has specifically designed People in your life that are supposed to be a part of your future, part of your calling, part of your life story, part of everything. And you have to hold fast to that because the enemy will come and do. Listen, all of Satan's agenda, his first agenda is to destroy. We know that John 10, 10, the thief does not come except to steal, kill, and destroy. So his agenda is to destroy. But you know what his strategy is? His strategy is to divide. And so he comes and he divides. He divides families. He divides friendships. He divides churches. That's that's his strategy. But you know what? Beyond his agenda and his strategy, you know what's even worse? Is his tactic. His tactic will always be offense. Always. Because if he can get you offended, oh, he's coming in for the destruction. It always starts with offense. It's his plan. When God wants to bless you, he sends you people. When Satan wants to curse you, he sends you people. The question is, which one are you? Once again, let's, because I don't want us just to talk about, you know, what kind of friends I'm looking for, even though we will. But today, I want to focus on our heart. I want to focus, am I leading people nowhere? Am I leading people everywhere? Or am I leading people somewhere with me? Am I, am I a divine connection from heaven in order to get them to their final destination? 
You have to ask yourself these questions because if not, you know what? You're just going to go ahead and just live the rest of your life just having these relationships with just anybody and everybody. And, 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 and listen, let me ask you a question. How's that working out for you? As a matter of fact, you know what? There are four powerful words that I always hear from people when they mess up. It always starts with this. Look at this. I had these friends. <laughs> yes or no? Yes. I mean, think about it. If you've ever ministered to anybody, and let's say they messed up, they, they, they're just in a bad place, it always goes back, it always ties back in with a person. Like, why are you so bitter? Well, this person did this to me. Well, why are you so angry? Well, my mom and my dad, they were just the worst. Well, why are you, why are you not furthering your life? Well, you know, that boss just sabotaged me. It always starts with someone, always. Talk to people. As a matter of fact, I've been watching this documentary um, on, on, uh, on this, this one guy who was on death row. And so he's telling a story to the camera. And, um, and he says, and it's, it was hilarious because I've always believed these, that I, I had these friends. I've, I've, I've always talked about this. And he said this. He says, well, here's how my story begins. I had these friends. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, all right. Tell me, talk to me, what's up? And so he's doing the interview, and he says, it started with these friends I had, and we started hanging out and, and partying. And, uh, and even he now, later today, while in death row, and isn't that sad when it's already too late, and you're having to reminisce something that you wish you would have changed? And he's like, well, I know they weren't, they weren't the right group of friends I should have been with. And uh, he's like, man, it just all happened in one night. And, uh, and he said, I was in the car, and we stopped at this one place, and this girl, you know, came to our car and started talking to one of my, you know, three friends, and then he got out of the car and went to go, you know, hang out with the girl, but then there was a jealous boyfriend, he came out, he started getting in our face, and he said, and uh, all of a sudden, um, you know, the guy flips my friend off, and my friend pulls out a gun, and he shoots and kills the guy, just like that, and he's like, he's like, he's like I'm sitting there like, in shock, like, I can't believe what just happened. Well, not only does the guy who shoots the guy go to jail for murder and then goes to death row, which he's already been executed, he says, but now I'm in, in, in this death row and I'm waiting for my execution and, and it all started with being with the wrong friends. Listen, your story doesn't have to be that, ex like that, that extent, okay? But how many know one, one bad partnership can jack you up for a lifetime. Huh? One bad relationship can ruin you for years. And, and maybe you have been betrayed. Maybe you've already experienced that bad relationship. Maybe now you're at the place of regret. I regret ever being with her. I regret ever being with him. I regret ever having those kind of friends. Well, guess what? You can regret all you want, but aren't you glad that it's in your past? Yeah. It's in your past. And so now today it's, okay, what do I do with this regret? What do I, how do I handle this regret? How do I deal with this regret that I have, this pain that I have? Because here's the reality is that so many times we keep finding, we keep searching, we keep looking, we keep focusing on finding the right friends when in reality we should be focusing on being God's kind of friend. Proverbs 13, 20 says this. The one who walks with wise will become what? Wise. But the companion of fools will be what? Destroyed. I know that's, I'm reading, I, I know verses already in my, my head, but this is a HC, HCSB. But a companion of fools will what? Suffer harm. The original version says, will be destroyed. So, so there's two types of, of people in our life, hopefully. Hopefully you have some wise people in your life. But then we also have people that can cause a lot of suffering. See, the wise person would be like the person who brought me to Jesus Christ. Man, that dude never stopped sharing Jesus. That's the kind of friend that I needed when I was far away from God. And I thank him for that because if it wasn't for him, if it wasn't for that type of uh, uh, you know, connection or relationship, I wouldn't be standing here today. 22 year, years later if it wasn't for this guy named Larry who I'm still friends with but 
then you have that other group of people. You have that person or those people that cause you suffering. And I believe that there are people here that still have friendships and relationships with people that are still hurting you. That means that they're intentionally or unintentionally constantly hurting you over and over and over again. But you just keep inviting it over and over again, expecting change. But here's the reality. You have to come to the place where you have to go ahead and, you know what, bring some people out of your, your sphere of influence. Especially if it's making you toxic. Especially if it's making you toxic. Because toxic, toxicity will bring poison in you and poison will bring bitterness and bitterness will, listen, it will eat you up inside and out. You'll begin to wear it on your face. So you have to begin to address those issues. Amen? So I I can remember the wisest friends, the wisest friends in my life have always been the ones that lead me closer to Jesus. Those have been the wisest. As a matter of fact, Hebrews, not Hebrews, but Proverbs 11.30, no, yeah, Proverbs 11.30 says, for he who wins souls is wise. So, so as I'm, I've been preparing for this message, I've been saying, God, we need to get the wisdom of God back in our life. Because a true friend always leads people back to God, especially a believer. Like, don't be that kind of believer friend that you hear the complaints of your friends you hear the pain of your friends and you're just like oh man i feel so sorry for you man uh that's that's sad wow i can't believe she did that to you no a a a real friend a wise friend will say you know what let's sit down let's pray about that you know let's sit down let me give you a verse that you can chew on let me give you a verse that you can meditate on let me give you a verse you can think about and as you think about this verse i believe that god is going to begin to deal with your heart and begin to bring healing to your heart and bring in, begin healing to your mind and renew your mind and that see that's wisdom you have to ask yourself as a christian if you if you claim to be a born again believer are you that kind of wise friend are you that wise friend You need to be that wise friend. We need to be that wise friend. We need to lead people closer to Jesus. If your close relationships aren't drawing you closer to Jesus, then you're just hanging around. They have to. You need people that will get in your face and be like, hey, man, what's up? And and just be honest. And and you need people you can be vulnerable with as well. We all need that. For example, do you guys remember being in school? Uh, Did you guys ever do the trust fall thing? Remember that trust fall in school? And then it was goofy. It was in elementary. But I'll, I'll never forget, um, obviously, if you have friends, you were awesome. But, man, if you had no friends, you were desperate. You know, you're just trying, like, hey, can you, can you do the trust fall? No, I don't like you. Okay. And, you know, you're just, like, you're just trying to find people. But how many of us can honestly say that some of us have made friendships out of desperation? Or you've hooked up or linked up out of desperation? Because you don't want to be lonely. Man, I know people that have gotten married just because they didn't want to live alone. And that was the only reason, like, wow. And then a year later, they're unhappy. They're not satisfied. So, uh, what's your name? Jaden, can I use you as an example? Yeah, Yeah, come on up here, Jaden. Let's give it up for Jaden. Come on, give it up for Jaden. Jaden, what's up, man? So, so we're in class, right? Teacher's saying, hey, we're going to, have you ever done the trust fall thing? No. You do, do you even know what that is? Yeah. Okay, you do. That's awesome. How old are you, Jaden? Ten. Ten years old? Good Lord. That's a big boy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Ten years old? Wow. You're going to be a, are you going to play football? Mm, maybe. maybe. <laughs> Patriots, your favorite team? <laughs> <laughs> I got dad over there already cussing me out. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so check this out. So. So you, you're in school and you're just, you know, you, you're sometimes out of desperation. You just, you just unload on anybody, right? Because you just want to be heard, you know? I just, I want, the, they, they can handle me. And so you ready for the trust fall, man? All right, come up here, man. Let's do it up here because people got to see. You better not draw me, man, all right, dude? All right, so I'm going to, I'm, 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 I'm like 180 pounds. So I hope you can carry that, okay? So are you ready, man? Where are you going? What are you, you're gonna let me fall. <laughs> you gotta step behind me, and and, his, and and then and you gotta catch me, right? 180 pounds, ready? And so we're just like trust falling. It's like okay, you trust, trust your neighbor. You go ahead and you trust, trust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just kidding. I wasn't gonna do that to you. I was gonna do that to you. Go ahead, have a seat. Give him a big hand. 
I have a point. Relax. Here's, here's the deal. Here's a truth. I don't care who you have in your life. You have to come to that, 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 that realization, that, that revelation, that there is no one on planet Earth that you can trust with your faults. No one. Nobody has the capacity to, to carry your falls but one, and his name is Jesus. That's why he says that he bore all your sins on the cross because he's the only one that can actually carry your sin, sustain your sin, destroy your sin, crush your sin. Nobody else can. And so what happens is we get so we get so um, uh, formed and shaped with I gotta I gotta trust you and and I got and then we put these false expectations on people that people could never ever live up to and the moment that they drop you because they weren't with you when you were going through something that's when relationships start tearing. That goes for marriages too. Your spouse can't heal you. Jesus heals. Jesus heals. We have to fall on Jesus. He can carry your weight. Can you imagine him trying to, I, I, I'm sure he would probably drop me. I mean, I'm sure he's a strong kid and everything, but you know, if I really put all my dead weight on, he will drop me. Yeah. He will drop me. And so many of us are walking around with dead weight and we're trying to put that weight on people and you keep coming to your conclusion that people aren't enough. And you're right, they're not enough. God is more than enough. God can handle you. God can heal you. God can restore you. Anything outside of that, you're just putting a false expectation on people. Amen? And so I get it. You got you to gotta have friends for counsel. You got, I get that. But we're talking about your weight. We're talking about your trust fall. Look at Proverbs 3, 5. Look, look what it says. It says, trust in the Lord with what? With what? With all your what? If he wanted you to trust anyone else but him, he would have said, trust the Lord with half your heart and then your friends. He would have said that. But he was clear. Trust in the Lord with some of your heart. A portion of your heart. A piece of your heart. And so the only reason that we are messed up is because we've put our trust in man. And God said it, man will fail you, but God will never fail you. And so we have to come to the, see, that will help heal your heart and stop holding things again. We, we put people in bondage because we hold things against them. But the truth and the reality is you can, you can hold all you want, but the only one that's being hurt is you. You're the only one that's, Jesus said, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And the latter part of the verse says, and lean not. Everybody say, lean. lean. And lean not on your own, but acknowledge. Amen. In other words, stop running to your friends and start running to Jesus. He says, acknowledge me and I will direct your path. I will tell you what to do. Once again, there's, we need wise counsel. But I think most Christians, okay, we first run to man and then we dump, 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 dump on as many of our friends as we can just so that we can get pity. We really don't want healing. We want agreement. You don't want healing. Come on. You want someone to agree with you like, oh, my God, no, he didn't. Oh, man, you leave that fool. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you, you know, you're right. You're right. See, no, but a wise friend will always lead people back to the cross and say, let me tell you what Jesus did. Let me tell you what God says about your situation. Amen. You can be a wise friend or you can be a harmful friend. And I believe that many of us here in church today and every church in America have been harmful friends and not wise friends. Because a wise friend always leads people back to Jesus. Amen. Amen. <laughs> say, say, trust me. So that's what God said. Trust me. Me. All right, I'm going to be vulnerable with you now. Can I be honest with you? I got minutes and I'm done. So, we all have frenemies. Because you know what? 
How many here are a friend of God? Yeah, we're, I mean, there's even a, a gospel s- song called, I'm a friend of God, you call me. Yeah, yeah, you know that song. That's pretty horrible singing, but that's okay. You got the point. But check this out. So, so, so we have frenemies, every single one of them. You know, you have right now people that you work with, coworkers, that they may not be like intimate friends, but they, they are, you know, uh, associates. They are, you know, people that we do life with, and they're friends. And sometimes those friends become frenemies and our our goal hopefully as believers is to try to befriend as i mean that's a real that's a that's a real christian a real christian befriends people right you're befriending people in your neighborhood you're befriending people in your workplace you're befriending people everywhere you go that's just what you should be doing well you know what um i had a a frenemy uh, recently and man i'll tell you this frenemy was trying to hurt me hurt my family, hurt um, hurt me in ways that if I told you, man, you'd probably get ticked off for me. And you have to be careful because, you know what, the worst offense is secondhand offense. That's the worst, man, man. You know, it's never the first offense. It's the second of It's like, well, I'm leaving with you too. Why are you leaving? Because they're offended. You know, and you just never, it's the worst. And so this person came and and tried to cause some serious harm. I'm like, what the? You know, it's, have you ever had a, na- a neighbor from hallelujah? <laughs> have you ever had one of those? Just, just from hallelujah, right? And it's because you're, we are like, you just want to tell that person, man, you are from, he-. but you know, you're like, hallelujah. And so, and so this person comes and, and tries to, to, to steal and to, to kill and to, like, just horrible, man. And, you know, I, I got upset. I was, I was ticked. You know, I started thinking, man, man, if you, if you only knew me before I was saved. You know, the thoughts start going like, man, if you, man, you don't even know what would have happened to you, man. I would, I would, you start thinking, you know, I would have, you know, if you would have, you know, that old man wants to come out. Like, man, you, you know who I am, you know. Anyways, that was bad. But, but I started getting these emotions that were taking me everywhere. And, and, and this person you know, just consistently, just bam, 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 thinking, what the heck? I'm like, this is really, this is an assignment, and it's true. This is an assignment from the devil himself. And, you know, just trying to, trying to distract me. And, and so I'm dealing with this. I'm like, oh, you got to be kidding. And then, of course, you know when you're doing a series called Friends, and you start studying, and then you read a verse that you wish you skipped and never saw? <laughs> Have you ever read the Bible, and now all of a sudden you're reading it like, dang, what... <laughs> God, right? Look, look at this in Matthew chapter 5, verse 4. He says, but here's what I tell you, Mauricio. Love your enemies. I'm like, no, you didn't, God. I know. <laughs> like, like, what does that have to do with friends, man, you know? What does that have to do with friends? Like, I, I shouldn't even bring this verse, you know? Like, well, they don't need that verse, you know? But no, he said, love your enemies. And then, and then you think if love is already asking for much, like, you want love? Okay, now you want me to use my prayer line. To pray for them. Now, now you, you not only want me to love my, and just think of the, the, think of it, picture the person's face right now who is possibly your frenemy right now. Someone who you just, just close your eyes, just like, who is that? Because I know many of you, at the moment I said it, you're already thinking of that person this whole time. You're, it's already in your head, like, oh my God. But let me, let me, let me tell you what Jesus said. He says, love your enemies. See, when you forgive someone, it doesn't mean that I have to go now be friends with someone. It's, it's never a matter of me now being a friend with my enemy. When I forgive, it's a matter of setting me free. And, and so he said, love your enemies and pray those who hurt you. Present tense. Pray, those, pray for those who hurt you. And this frenemy was hurting me. And, and it just started just building. You know, I wanted to give him the fellowship of uppercut. You know what I'm saying? Like, like just, that's, I'm just being honest with you. I had that moment. It, we, listen, if you, if you can't be honest with, you'll never be a good friend. All right, I'm trying to be a friend of y'all. I had a moment. But, but then last night, as I've been preparing and just reading my verse, I'm like, man, I got to, God, forgive me, man. I'm just everywhere, man. I'm just, ah. And it's been a long time. I'm pretty quick to forgive when someone does some. I, I, 
I release fast. I, I, I think that's been one of my greatest strengths. Forgiveness has been my great strength. You can ask my wife too. Um, but last night, I, I just came to the conclusion, I'm like, man, I have a fence. And that offense is going to bring division. And that division, see, because just because you're offended doesn't mean that's going to affect the people in your house. That offense is going to spread. And it starts dividing your house. And then he comes for the destruction. And so last night, I, I read that verse, of course, and I said, God, and, and you know what I did? I prayed, and, and, and it felt good to pray. And, and, I, and I started thinking about how much God loves her. I did. I started thinking about this. And then here, I wrote down my prayer, what I prayed, and, and uh, let me read it to you. I said, Father, I know you love them, and I love you. Therefore, I pray for the person's well-being and I ask you to touch their hearts like you did mine, like you did mine last night, right? Mm. However, if they continue to hurt me, vengeance is yours, so not mine. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 That, that's all, listen, that's all you have to, you, when you do that, it's so, I woke up this morning and, and I just felt like, I looked at my phone, I'm like, man, I feel free. I feel great this morning. I'm like, Dang, I mean, I, felt, I just felt, I felt like a weight was, you know why? Because I was trying to carry the weight. Then you're trying to talk to your family about the weight, and you want them to carry it too. But nobody can carry the weight. And Jesus, one, listen, one love action of prayer lifted the weight, and it's no longer on me, it's on him. But we got to come to this place, church. All of us. You got, to, it hurts you. It bitters you. It toxifies you. It kills you. And so we got to come to the place of love your enemies. Love your enemies. Pray for those that hurt you. And once again, it's, it's not about being friends again with someone. It's about guarding your heart from contamination. Because he said, uh, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And when your heart is being deceived by someone else's hurt, you're no longer trusting God. You've entrusted that person who has emotional handles on you and is controlling you. Which, by the way, how many know that you have no control over any relationship? You can't control what people do. The only thing you can control is your focus. And the only thing Satan comes for is distraction. Distraction from what? Distraction from what matters most. Jesus. Think about this. There are so many people in church that have been hurt, betrayed, just gone through so much pain because of people. People have trauma because of people. And what happens is, it's, I, I've, 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 I've noticed it in the years in ministry, that people who have been hurt have an issue with their intimacy with God. Always. Why? Because it's human nature to put more faith in people that we can't see than a God that we can't see. And so when you keep putting your faith in someone that you can't see who hurt you over and over again, whether it's one or ten relationships, what it does, it affects or it mirrors your intimacy with God. You have now an issue with God. It doesn't draw you closer to God. It actually draws you further from God. But guess what? Guess, that's why I love God's word. But Jesus is so awesome. He writes a book called Revelation, and he begins to deal with every single human. See, you are the church. You are the church. You are the church. You are the church. I'm the church. You're the church. You're, it's not a building. We are all the church. Okay, so get this. And then last verse, Revelation 2, look what Jesus says. So he's talking to the church, you, and he says, hey, I love that you love the things I love, and I know that you hate the things I hate. But he says, but I have this thing against you. In other words, when you get to the book of Revelation, these are the last days. This is when he's talking to all the church and breaking down exactly who you are. And he says, here's something I hold against you. If anyone's going to hold anything against me, I give God all permission because he'll treat me right. He says, you have turned away from the love you had at first. You know why? People. 
He said, think about how far you have fallen. How many times you've fallen just trying to fall on friendships, trying to fall on people. You put all this expectation on them and you've fallen and you, and he says, think about how far you have fallen. How far, how many times you've just gone down and he says, turn away from your sins. What are our sins? Unforgiveness, bitterness, resentment, anger, rage. That, that, that is sin to God. But look, he gives us the answer. So you ask, what do, then what do I do, God? What do I do with all this rage, this bitterness, this resentment, this anger towards people who have caused me trauma? And you know what Jesus says? He says, I want you to do the things you did at first. In other words, he's saying, do you remember when you fell in love with me? That's what he's saying. Jesus is saying, he's making it intimate. Do you remember when you fell so much in love with me? What would you do? And if I, if I were to ask the questions here, I'm sure many would say, I remember I used to wake up and read my Bible every morning. Man, I remember I would pray every day because I just wanted to be in the presence of God. Some of us would be like, you know what? I remember I used to be a quick forgiver. Man, I remember when I first got saved, man, I was so in love with God, man, that there was nothing wrong that anyone can do to me that can harm me because I was quick to release. Like if someone hurt me, I'd be like, man, it's okay, man. Don't worry about it, bro. Don't, don't, it's all good, man. Just don't do it again. No big deal. But times that, 70. And Peter, who was ready to sin, he said, what? Forgiveness? Jesus, how many times does a man need to forgive someone? What? Like seven times? And Jesus says, no. It's more like seven times 70. And he was like, what? And the reason being was because Jesus was saying, when you keep me, when your focus stays with me, See, our focus as humans is that we crave happiness. If I just have the right person, I'm happy. If I just find the right spouse, I'm happy. If I just find the right friends, I'm happy. But you will never, ever find happiness in any person on this earth. The only person that can give you happiness is first love. The only one. His name is Jesus. That's why he said, come back. He's calling us back to first love because we can't talk about friendships until we get this one right. When we get this one right, we get this one right. It starts with our vertical before we go horizontal. And maybe this horizontal is not working because you haven't got your vertical right. We need to get this back right. We get this right, we get everything right. He's saying, come back. And look, he says, do the things that you did first. And if you don't, I will come to you and I'll remove your lab stand from its place. You know what that simply means? He says, I'll remove your influence for people. I'll take that away from you. You know why? Because if anything God trusts you with is souls. Because he who wins souls is wise. And I love this part. He says, but Mauricio... <laughs> You do have this for your favorite, man. You know, because after you have to love and pray for someone, man, you're like, God, were you ever on my side? He's like, no, 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 yeah, I am, dude, relax. He's saying, I, I, you do have this, this favor on you. He says, the favor is that you hate the way the Nicolaitans acted, and I hate it too. So here's the good news. Is those people that have hurt you, God hates the action but doesn't hate the person. So it's okay to hate what took place, right? Because God hates it too. And when you understand that God understands you, I'm cool with that. Okay, God, you get it then. You hate what she did to me, right? You hate what he did to me, right? You hate that, right? I, I, of course, I talk about that a little bit more, right? But, but, but God's like, listen, I hate it too. But go back to your first love. I got you, first love. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.